The Gulf of Aden, named for the seaport of Aden in southern Yemen, is a sea lane of strategic significance. Located in the Arabian Sea between Yemen on the south coast of the Arabian Peninsula and Somalia in the Horn of Africa, the Gulf of Aden is part of the important Suez Canal shipping route between the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Arabian Sea, and the Indian Ocean. The Gulf is roughly 900 kilometers long. Its width varies. Literal states of the Gulf are Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen. It is estimated that the Gulf of Aden is used by approximately 22,000 vessels annually, carrying around 8% of the world's trade, including more than 12% of the total volume of oil transported by sea. Hence, it forms an essential oil transport route between Europe and the Far East. During the Greek conquest to Persia and the Indian subcontinent, the Gulf was discovered as a convenient route to access these regions. The area was included in the Erythrian Sea along the Gulf of Tajura and the Red Sea. Several small islands within the Gulf still bear colloquial versions of the Greek names given to them. Conquerors such as Darius of Persia and Alexander the Great of Macedonia sailed this route, and maps from their era mentioned the Gulf as an extension of the Erythrian Sea. The geography of the Gulf of Aden differs from the surrounding topography in certain aspects. The average depth of the Gulf of Aden is around 500 meters, while the deepest point is 5.5 kilometers at the Alula Fartak Trench. In today's episode, we want to discuss why the Gulf of Aden is dangerous. The Gulf of Aden is known as a hotbed for piracy. Despite being a busy and thriving trade route for vessels across the globe, not all regions of the Gulf of Aden are safe or easily accessible. Piracy has been a major concern for nations that send ships via this route since the 2000s, and it is only recently that there has been a significant decline in these occurrences. Piracy has mainly originated from Somalia and affects the Gulf of Aden, the Gardafui Channel, the islands near Socotra, and the Somali Sea. Post the 2000 collapse of the Somalian government, there were cases of rampant illegal fishing by foreign vessels. Without the protection of their territorial waters by disbanded Somalian navy, coastal villages took to arms to keep their areas protected. These groups, using small boats, would sometimes hold vessels and crew for ransom. This grew into a lucrative trade with large ransom payments. The pirates began hijacking commercial vessels. With the region badly affected by poverty and government corruption, there was little political motivation at the local level to deal with the crisis. Large numbers of unemployed Somali youth began to see it as a means of supporting their families. However, this turned into a lucrative venture, with ransoms bringing in enormous amounts of wealth into the nation. Very soon, this region became a hotbed for piracy and hijackings. Over time, the level of technology and planning with which these hijackings have taken place has been a cause for concern. International organizations began to express concern over the new wave of piracy due to its high cost to global trade and the incentive to profiteer by insurance companies and others. Some believe that elements within Somalia collaborate with the pirates as a bulwark against others and for financial gain. In the late 2000s, anti-piracy coalition known as Combined Task Force 150, including 33 nations, established a maritime security patrol area in the Gulf of Aden. By 2010, these patrols were paying off, with a steady drop in the number of incidents. By November 2017, there were no major vessels or hostages remaining in pirate captivity. Earlier in 2017, a few incidents of piracy were reported as the navies of Asian and European nations began to more actively rescue hijacked ships, including the bulk carrier OS-35. Now let's have a look at the pirates' profile. 
Most of the pirates are young. An official list issued in 2010 by the Somali government of 40 apprehended pirate suspects noted that 80% were born in Somalia's southern conflict zones, while only 20% came from the more stable northern regions. As of 2012, the pirates primarily operated from the Galmudug region in the central section of the country. In previous years, they largely ventured to sea from ports located in the northeastern province of Puntland, until the regional administration launched a major anti-piracy campaign and operation, and established a maritime police force, PMPF. According to a 2008 BBC report, the pirates can be divided into three main categories. The first one is local fishermen, considered the brains of the pirates' operations due to their skills and knowledge of the sea. Secondly is ex-militiamen, who previously fought for the local clan warlords or ex-military from the former Bari government used as the muscle. And the third one is technical experts, who operate equipment such as GPS devices. The closest Somali term for pirate is Burad Badid, which means ocean robber. However, the pirates themselves prefer to be called Badainta Bada, or saviors of the sea, or often translated as Coast Guard. For the record, Somali pirates have attacked hundreds of vessels in the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean region, though most attacks do not result in a successful hijacking. In 2008, there were 111 attacks, which included 42 successful hijackings. However, this is only a fraction of the up to 30,000 merchant vessels which pass through that area. The rate of attacks in January and February 2009 was about 10 times higher than during the same period in 2008, and there have been almost daily attacks in March, with 79 attacks, 21 successful by mid-April. Most of these attacks occurred in the Gulf of Aden, but subsequently the pirates increased their range and started attacking ships as far south as off the coast of Kenya in the Indian Ocean. Some significant hijackings in the region include the murder of a Chinese sailor in the late 2000s because ransom demands were not met. This led to the United Nations adopting a resolution that allowed and authorized nations that sailed in the region to collaborate and repress acts of piracy. This was over and beyond the absolute embargo on Somalia. By late 2008, the hijackings began to spread outside the Gulf of Aden and encompass larger vessels. The Indian Navy received UN authorization to conduct anti-piracy operations freely in the region. In addition, the Marsk, Alabama was also hijacked by four Somali pirates, which led to a standoff with United States naval forces. Ultimately, the vessel was freed and the captain taken hostage was released. The hijacking of a large vessel that was carrying relief aid to Somalia created public awareness of the dangers of sailing to the region. Thereafter, international efforts against piracy rapidly increased, with more successful operations by naval forces. Russian special forces freed an oil tanker in 2010. The Navy SEALs of Korea rescued a Maltese chemical carrier, and the Indian Navy captured multiple pirate motherships over the years. After a lull of almost five years, the Aris-13 tanker was hijacked en route to Mogadishu from Djibouti in 2017. The hijacking occurred off the Somali coast, and the crew were released a few days later. Over the past several years, CTF-150 has captured, arrested, and handed over countless pirates to the Somali Coast Guard. Large caches of weapons and drugs have also been seized during smuggling operations. Under UN laws, the force has permission to execute a visit, board, search and seize, or VBSS, operation in order to maintain maritime peace in the area.